Yeah, it's like, come on, get him in here and get it going. Well, welcome everyone. I'm glad I haven't done this class or in any class in a while, so I'm excited. It's fun to do. I'm glad to be here with y'all uh, since we're coming off Thanksgiving and everything. Um, let's give me, give me one positive thing that's going on in your life. Maybe it's your health or somewhere else. Um, um, something positive or something you're looking forward to or something along the way. Who wants to start? Hey, amen. We'll take that. That's great. Good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, works good. Good. Everyone's healthy. That's great. You know, um, just generally good stuff. That's good. I like it. What else? <laughs> really for me, I like just like getting energy back. Feels really good. That's great. Yeah. So That's not being so tired all the time. That's awesome. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean, Lila? Um, I think I'm most excited that I'm actually eating more than one time a day. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know that's a big improvement. We've that's had, big so. for me. That's so. great. I mean, I'm still struggling with the four servings of vegetables every meal, but yeah. at least I'm eating something. That's great. So. Yeah. Improvement. I yeah, like it. That's big for me. Um, well, I know I'm not doing like a full thing, yeah. but um, my stomach's been feeling better than it usually is. That's great. Um, just certain meal eliminations. So. That's awesome. Great. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Well, today, and it's funny, well, hey, haven't we been detoxing this whole time? Well, yeah, of course you have. Um, um, you know, more beginning cleanse and detoxification processes that are getting and going. Uh, this is just kind of a little bit more into the heavier part of detoxification there. Um, and so, you know, good job on the things that you've done and the things that you have working through already at this point. And so I'm going to try to sometimes I get long-winded so I'm gonna to try to get right into the meat of this all right so you, and I'm gonna summarize at the end so we're gonna come around to hey what are our action steps what are we gonna walk away with it'll be very clear if not we're here for you all right get in contact and, and Alex will have some other things um, um, for you if you have questions or things that way so um, but uh, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through some of this beginning stuff because it's going to be more of just reference stuff and for you. But when I talk about detoxification, the simplest way I just want to put it is I don't necessarily mean that, hey, we're just detoxing your body. What we're doing is we, our goal with detoxification and why this is like, hey, haven't we been detoxing? Well, yeah, but our goal is, is we want for your body to properly detoxify itself. Okay, that's what real true detoxification is. Getting it at a cellular level and allowing your body to do what it's supposed to. Your liver to detoxify your blood, all right? Your kidneys to remove toxins. Your gut to take in what's good and remove what's bad, all right? And those things get so messed up for most of us and it causes a lot of different symptoms and issues we're going with. So um, those are some of the beginning things with this. But the other thing is detoxification isn't just a lot of people think it's a nutritional thing. And it's more than that. There's a lot more that goes into it. And you can kind of see some of those things in the front here, you know, and because uh, um, some of the things we'll be using are supplements and detox tools, but that's, you know, number nine and 10 on here. One, you know, healthy living and clean water and movement and emotions. You're, you know, those are all things that, hey, we can work on and help ourselves and, and become, um, you know, detoxify things from our life that's going to help us function better. All right, and you'll notice this as you know, hearing from some of you some improvements that you're getting, and talk with some of you, you know outside of here as well about you know those improvements you're getting, and what that's allowing is is there's less demand on your body so that it can focus on the things that's most important and helping your body heal, adapt, and recover. You may say, well, hey, what does detoxification even have to do with what my symptoms are, or what I have going on? It really has everything to do with it. it has everything to do with how your body's functioning because that's how we heal. We heal from the inside out. And when we've got more energy from our body internally to allow that to happen, then that's what gets us those miracle changes of life change that allows us to take it to the next level. Does that make sense? All right, great. All right, so let's see, that's page one and page two. Again, benefits of detoxification, that's something you can look at. OptiCleanse GHI, I'm gonna be talking a good bit about this incredible product and my favorite thing that we offer. Um, and uh, we'll be talking about that, um, but that's going to be kind of your um, nutritional breakdown for that. Um, what I want to get right into here is the um, detoxification 
food elimination here. All right, so page 42. All right, so, so this is really your detox phase here, all right, of what we're talking about here. So it's a 21-day phase that we're going to be going through. Um, through your transitions of the foods that you've removed and the things that you've added, those things are going to continue. There's going to be a, a couple other tweaks there from what you've done. You've done the bulk of it, but there'll be a couple other tweaks from that um, that you'll have during this 21-day period. Um, and then we're going to, after that, start reintroducing some of those foods we removed. Okay, so there's light at the end of the tunnel here. All right. Some of this, uh, why we do this for such long periods of time, is because there's a lot of things we eat that stays within our cells for long periods of time. Even if you say, oh, well, I don't eat it that often or here or there, if you don't properly eliminate it and properly detoxify it, it's going to stay in your cells and stay in your body and continue to affect you. Um, Gluten is one of those one that can take to over 21 days before it actually is removed from your body when you, and that's with proper detoxification. That's not just removing it, okay? And so those are those things that where people, um, you know, really start to get those, those things that they know. So, oh, wow, I didn't realize how much this affected me or it affected my energy levels or how I was feeling or how I sleep, those type of things. So um, this is going to really help us start narrowing that down, okay? Um, so what we've got is we've got three phases here. Number one is our ramp-up phase, okay? So days one through four, okay? Two scoops. What we're talking about is the OptiCleanse. All right, it's a uh, it's a powder. Um, it's a powder supplementation. All right, that's going through here. It's got 26 grams of protein. It has all your amino acid complex. It's also your multivitamin. Um, it's going to have um, your building blocks for um, nutritional health to build proper cells. Um, it's also going to help repair gut. It's going to help clean out your liver, and it's also going to boost your immune system. Okay, so it's an incredible product. Literally, I mean, it's literally the best thing out there um, in terms of, hey, if there's one thing that you're going to do and do for, you know, consistently, this would be it, all right? And so, um, and it's very important during this detoxification phase because it has a lot of detoxification factors in it, okay? So when we say two scoops, that's what it is. That's one serving of OptiCleanse is two scoops, right? It says it right on the bottle there. So you're going to do one serving of OptiCleanse with this two scoops, all right? You're start this tomorrow, right? Yes, you're going to start this tomorrow, correct, yeah, with this class, we're going to start tomorrow with this, okay? Um, and so essentially you're doing one serving of that per day, um, preferably in water, all right? It's 26 grams of protein, so um, when you drink this, if you're not hungry after it, it's okay. If you are, go ahead and eat, all right? Not, never during this time are you not eating. You can eat as much as you need to, okay? Um, but... Some people find sometimes in the beginning it's a little bit getting used to because like oh you know your body's used to a certain way but then after a couple days you might notice hey I you know have this in the morning and I'm not even I'm not hungry even barely hungry at lunchtime and that's how I was when I first did it and it's pretty much how I am now I, I do it almost every so morning. So you force so. yourself to eat even if you're not hungry? No no not in this but we do want to yeah so yeah <laughs> so that's something you do. However we do want to keep striving towards having three meals all right and not snacking in between. So that's the goal. However, this in your for your first doing this for breakfast in the morning, um, if this is all you have, that's okay, okay. Um, but we still want to work towards three meals. So then you know you have that in the morning, still have lunch, still have dinner. All so right? where does the fit life stuff come into play? The fit food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that you'll discontinue. You can just hold okay. on to that, and you'll just go to this. Okay. Yeah. Great. So what are we just continuing? She, she was. She had something different. Oh, yeah. So you still drink the cranberry juice? Yes. Drink? Yep. Continue the cranberry juice drink through this. Okay. And, and then bone after broth. the twenty-one, to, yes, and bone broth as well. Um, um, the bone broth, you you want to if you can. It's okay to have it in the morning as well with this. But if you have you know do OptiCleanse in the morning, it's probably better to do bone broth you know lunch and or dinner time. Okay. Um, or even in between there. Good you question. still do the cranberry juice three times three a day. times a day yes continue with that through this and then after the detoxification phase and we'll talk about this later and after it is you can go down to once a day for the cranberry drink all right um so uh um so that'll be you know more of a maintenance phase with that all right all right so two scoops daily with preferably in water if you want to do it in almond milk you can again that's just going to be more protein um, and calories if you want it there, you know, it's, it's fine, but it may be too much for you. So I would try water first, 
um, do it that way. Um, and then if you want to do unsweetened almond milk, that's okay as well. All right? Uh, then days five through seven, you're going to do twice a day. Okay? Two scoops twice a day for breakfast and for dinner. Pretty simple. All right? So you start it once a day for the first four days. Then you go to twice a day for the next four days. Okay? All right. Then we're going into the heavy detoxification phase. So the only thing that means is, is you're going to do it three times a day now. All right? Now, again, when you're doing it three times a day, depending on how hungry you are, you know, and again, we talk, you still want to be, you don't want to starve yourself. You still want to be in a good rhythm, okay? Starving yourself is not going to be helpful, all right? Um, however, I mean, even when I do this, like, I'm not hungry until dinner time usually, all right? I'll have it for breakfast, have it for lunch, and then I'll just eat some veggies for dinner with it. Right, I mean that's you know that's so this probably would count as a meal. Yes. Okay. However, if I did, I'm hungry, then add that. Yes, to add to it, especially in breakfast. You know, you may not breakfast or lunchtime, but there's really you want to get some veggies every day. Okay. All right, somewhere put them in there, um, and you can eat other things with it as well. All right, that's fine. And we'll get to your food list here in a second. You'll know exactly what all of that is. Um, so I don't want you to go these. Uh, you know, days 8 through 14 with only doing OptiCleanse, right? So yes, you don't have to eat like with your breakfast, one or your lunch, but you still need to be eating, all right, something, you know, whether it's just some veggies or having some nuts or, you know, just something to get some other nutrition other from there. You know, hey, would you survive and be good with it? Sure you can. I mean, you know, that's fine, but I want to get some of the outside nutrition. It's just going to help. It's also going to help with some more fiber, help with digestion, things that way. But not another protein drink. What's that? Not another protein drink, right? No, yeah, no more protein drink other than this. Yeah, yeah, only do this. So, uh, um, so that'll be two scoops three different times throughout the day. Make sense? All right, so with this one, you can see during the heavy detoxification, there's a star there, and really the only other difference with that is we're not going to do any animal proteins during this period, okay? So no animal proteins, no meats during this period. So you're going to be pretty much veggies and nuts during this time. Okay, um, and for some people it's easier. Some people are like, oh, I've never done that before. You know, you've got plenty of protein from these shakes. Doing three of these a day, all right? It's a it's a large amount, so you don't need that protein um, from animal sources. Also, what this phase is allowing us to do is giving our gut a rest. Okay, our gut never gets a rest. It's nonstop turning and burning and digesting our food, and it just never gets a break. And so this is the phase of where we're going to give it some rest. Let it catch up a little bit. Let our body work on some other areas. Um, and, uh, um, and that'll be part of the reason that we're going to work with that as well. Because animal protein is a little bit harder to break down. Okay? All right. And then we're going to ramp down. That's the, the heaviest part. Then we're going to go down to two scoops. Uh, two scoops twice a day. So one serving twice a day. Breakfast and dinner. And then you're going to go down to one scoop a day. All right, so you ramp up, you go from one to two, and then three, and then down two, and then down to one. All right? All right. Um, so, trick with the OptiCleanse, um, kind of give you a little back on this. So, um, the scoops are pretty big, all right? So, it's a lot of um, powder that you go in there, but you only need about 10 to 12 ounces of water, and that'll mix up there. Um, However, if you, if you put it in first and then the water in second, a lot of times some will stick to the bottom because it's hard to get that all shaken up. So what I find to be the easiest is put the water in first, and then if you really want, you can put one scoop in, shake it up, and then put the other scoop in, shake it up. I just put the water in, put one, both scoops on top, and then you can put a couple ice cubes if you want, and that kind of break it up as well. And then you um, just shake it real hard for you know like 10 seconds, and that usually you know takes care of it. Um, so uh, that's just kind of some little tricks with it, because because the last thing I do not want chunks in my protein shake. That's gross. I hate it. Like I can't do it. And so you can easily get this all mixed up very quickly. Um, just you got to kind of work it a little bit um, that way. So ice cubes will have a, these uh, shaker bottles will get you also have a, a a mesh in them that you can put that'll help break it up. Honestly, I like to leave it out. 
if you, if, especially if you do ice, just do ice. And you do it, and they'll pretty much be melted, you know, by the time you're done shaking it. Um, and it'll kind of all be there. So, now, can um, you only put two in there, or can you do it to your desired thickness? Um, only do two. Yep. But so what you can do if you want it thicker or thinner? Hey, do I come on in? Yep. You can uh, take your. Oh, yep. Grab you this right here. You want to come sit right over here, right there, whichever one. Is good. Yep. We're on page forty-two. Um, so uh, so yeah, you can just put less water in if you want it thicker, and that's another way that if you're having trouble getting it uh, all dissolved, just put more water in it. It'll just be watered down a little bit more. All right. That's the bone broth. Uh, this is going to be OptiCleanse. Okay. Yep, so we're going to give you that today. So, right. so fun with the bone broth, I, I use the little like spinner thing, what it was. Oh, it? yeah. The, For cocoa? And to tell you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... Will it work for that too? Yep, you can do it that way. I mean, yeah, some people blend, you can blend, you can throw it in a blender too and do it that way. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you can get creative with it. That's just something I find to be really easy. Just put the water in first, put the two scoops on top. It's a nice cube if you want to shake it up and it's good. All right? So I have a question. Yeah. I can see a challenge right from the getting here. Yeah. So in the middle of the heavy detox, yep. Saturday of that week is my company Christmas party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, so while we're doing this, yep. is you know lightning going to strike us down if heaven forbid we pick up a I don't know. Yeah. I mean, just you know. Uh, yeah, the, the best thing is you, you want to, you, you really just want to plan through this phase. If you can really stick to this, it's really the best time to stick to it sure. as close as you can. I mean, hey, you know, if you're going to do something, I mean, you know, right. I mean, hey, that, that's up to you. you. You know, you can do that. And, and if you got a party, hey, I'm going to do this. But just pre plan, um, you know, have your shakes. You're probably not going to be hungry anyway. You know, right. you, you're thinking of, oh, I'm going to see all this food. I'm gonna be, you're probably not going to want it. Right, you're probably going to be full from the shake. So have the shakes ahead of time and, uh, you know, a lot of veggies and stuff you can chew and, and eat on if, if you want to do something else you can. Um, again, it kind of depends if, you know, some people are dealing with different things. If we're dealing with sugar handling issues or this or that, you really don't want to get into any sugar at all. All right, you don't want to touch the stuff. You don't want it from any source. Okay, um, so... So yeah, as much as you can stick to this, this is an important time because we're, we're also changing your metabolism. Okay, we're taking any any bit of your body being a sugar burner, we're changing it to being a fat burner. All right, during this process. So as much as you can keep away from sugars, all right, that's that's going to be a huge help. All right, um, in the long run for you, it's going to help for sustainability with it. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Um, all right. So that's the the ramp up, ramp down, and Dorothy. I'll kind of run through that with you quickly. Uh, at the end here, all right? All right, so if we flip over to the next page there, page 43, um, this gives you a little bit of breakdown of, you know, animal protein to eat, uh, things that go, I'm gonna show you on the list, it kind of just walks you through it a little bit more. Um, but again, you can eat that, eat as much as you can, you know, a good, um, if other things that you are eating when you are having animal protein, you can eat as much animal protein as you want in the, you know, in the other phases of it. Um, just do twice as much for vegetables. All right? If you want to have a big honking you know, chunk of chicken or whatever, just have twice as much of vegetables. Um, you know, good luck eating all that when you're on you know, two and three shakes. It's, it, it'll, it'll fill you up. In the beginning, you'll be like, oh, maybe not so much. You might feel hungry because you're used to having more in your stomach. But it'll change you know, within a day or two usually. It's pretty quick. Is tuna a decent fish? Because I've added a little bit to my salad yeah. or something extra. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what you want to do there. Um, again, it's going to walk through of you know some other things, and it's going to walk you through this. Um, there's uh, on page 44. Um, if weight loss is one of your goals, it talks a little bit more about in caloric intake. I'm not a big fan of that for most people. I put it here because. Um, it is something that sometimes we have to go to. Uh, most people, I don't have an issue with eating too much food. Right? Usually, you're all eat, not eating enough, and um, your body's starving, and it's holding on to all the fat that it can get, and it's causing these issues. So um, go ahead and eat. All right? Um, all right, let's go, and then we can come back to some of that if you have questions once we go through the list here. But the list pretty much gets it all right down to black and white here on um, page 45. 
So this would be the list uh, that you're going to be on during the detoxification, all right? Which again starts tomorrow for y'all. Um, so if this is something you want to take with you in, in your shop, or if you were wondering, or take a picture with your phone, you know, this would be the, the thing that you're going to live by for 21 days, all right? And what it is, so fluids, water, slice of lemon can be used with the water, and herbal teas, okay? That's the liquids that we can have outside of on the cranberry drink as well. I have a question. Yep. Why can you not have coffee? Because what we, that's another thing as well is we're retraining the system from caffeine. I mean, even if it's decaffeinated. So you can, preferably not during this case. If it's something you really like to have, that's not the end of the world if you're not dealing with any sort of sleep issues or things like that. Um, but you want to get a naturally decaffeinated coffee. Um, I know Freshmark has it. It's kind of hard to find. They use a chemical process to decaffeinate coffee for most of them, 98% of the stuff that's out I there. I just drink one cup of breakfast. That's okay. Yeah, I didn't so, know, so. yeah so, so that's something. If you can find something that it doesn't use that chemical process, that'll... Uh, you guys found some somewhere, right? Caribou, Caribou coffee. Caribou coffee has some? Okay, there you go. So they've got a good decaf there. Um, that hair's too dark. Um, yeah. Um, we did like hefty scoops per. Well, I like a weak, weak coffee. That's okay. Not yeah. So yeah. Is that put about a. Then you'd be good. You'll like feel like yeah. Yeah. And and There you water. go. Yeah, then that shouldn't be any big deal. Um, so, yeah, so water, slice of lemon, and herbal teas. Okay? Here's your animal proteins chicken, duck, fish, wild game, goose, lamb, turkey, venison. Um, so, the things that you'll notice that aren't on here that you had before was beef and um, pork. All right? So those are the things that I want to say, multiple reasons for those. Inf those are a lot of times inflammatory foods, um, and beef is also, um, a lot of times some people have sensitivities or allergies to that don't realize it. So it's not that common, it's more of usually an inflammation issue, but uh, um, yeah, that's going to be your animal proteins, okay? Um, and then you got your nice long vegetable list there, and then your nuts, seeds, um, and, and nut butters. Are on here, so you can go through your almonds, hazelnuts, pecans, macadamians, um, walnut butter, almond butter. Um, it doesn't say almond. Oh yeah, it does say almond butter up there. Um, so, uh, so yeah, those are your nuts. Another way for um, some substance and protein there, and then your oils, butter. All right, butter's okay. Continue with butter. I have a question. Yes. Why not cashews? Um, so cashews, it's because of their growing process, um, is sometimes it's again, it's not the cashew itself that's the problem, uh, it's what's grown and sometimes there's certain fungus and things that are on it that can make you think that you're allergic to it and you're not, but that's something that we'll kind of figure out from going with that, so. So even like organic? Yeah, we want to stay away okay. from it for now, yeah, because even in organic growth. So when it's talking about butter here, it's talking about one of these up here? No, this is actual butter. Okay. Yep, actual butter. Ideally, I don't know if um, Alex talked about it at your orientation class, but Kerrygold or raw butter, okay, is ideal for if you're, if, um, you're gonna cook with butter. You can cook with butter and coconut oil at high heat, okay? Olive oil, you really don't wanna cook with it all unless you know what you're doing, all right? You want really low temperatures with olive oil or raw, because if it starts to burn, starts to smoke at all, it's actually turning to a trans fat olive oil is okay so at high heat you only you can use butter or coconut oil a uh, low heater or raw if you want to use olive oil okay and then your dressings or marinades for salads this is something um, again you can ask for if you eat at a restaurant or I know some of our products members have just made it and brought it with them and we've got some recipes and stuff in the back here um, for some of this um, but um, Dressings from olive oil, lemon juice, or vinegar with spices. All spices are allowed to flavor food. So that's one of the things that, oh, you know, I want to spice, you know, have something that tastes a little different. Do this. Get creative with spices, all right? It can go a long way with vegetables, with meat. Um, if you're used to cooking meat, season your vegetables the same way you would cook your meat, okay? And, and do it that way. You know, it makes a, um, a big difference in, you know, how you're doing it. And you can get different stuff. and. Um, there's lots of different uh, good, good blends out there that are already made and, and different things that way to work with. So, 
So this might be a dumb question, but like, let's just say during the um, no meat yep. section, and I wanted to cook dinner, and I wanted to have the vegetables, but I cooked it all together, and I didn't eat the chicken, but gave that part to Sean. Oh, that's, that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's so it's fine, it's it's fine if it touches it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The main thing in it is that we don't want to be processing. Oh, yeah, we don't want to be processing um, okay. the meat itself. So okay. yeah, no, that would be fine. Good. All right. So that's our food list. So then someone, you know, along the way will ask, well, can I do this or can I do that or can I have this or can I have that? And then I say as nice as I can, I say, is it on the food list? And I say, well, no. I say, okay, then you've got your answer. Okay. <coughs> so if it's not here, then the answer is no. Okay. Um, so, I know that's the, so, that, so that's going to be, uh, um, again, where, all right, here's your food list, and then here's to reiterate that on page 46. Here's what's not on the food list. Okay. Um, to kind of give you an idea of that. Something that's going to be a little different is during this time is you're not going to have fruit. Okay. So no fruit during this time, um, which you could have done some some before, 20, up to 25 grams of fructose of fruit from before. Um, but pretty much everything else is the same. You're already, you're already removing. So. Um, um, so yeah, so that's it. So we don't we want to stay. We don't want to get any sugars in our diet. Um, you know, if there is something you're buying or something, you know, make sure, you know, that as a label, you know, really... Other than, you know, some of these nut butters and things, you know, nothing should, you know, there shouldn't be a label really on anything that you're eating. Um, make sure that they don't have any added sugars or, you know, things that, that the ingredients is really literally just almonds or, you know, whatever, whatever um, it is that you're buying. Okay? All right. Food list. Down. So that's 45 and 46. All right, tips for a successful detox. All right, here's some, some good things here. Um, prepare ahead of time, all right? Some of the things you can do, and what I really like to do is, is I get, I like cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots, and I'll just steam those in large batches, and I just have it in the fridge, and I'll just, I mean, I'll eat right out of the big bowl, you know, and just do it that way, and you can just eat on that, and, and then it's right, you know, you can just take a portion with you, and then it's, you know, ready to go, and warm it up if you want. I'm kind of weird. I don't usually warm up my food just because I don't use a microwave and it takes a while on the stove and I don't really care. So, <laughs> But you know, you can warm up uh, your food and do it that way. So, um, um, so prepare. Grocery shop ahead of time. You know, have it in your refrigerator. Sweet, um, sweet potatoes, um, you know, you can have on hand. Those are something a lot of people are go-to and really like to continue with. So um, you like... That's my go-to. Yeah, that's good. That's my um, yeah, so you can continue with that. Um, uh, large portions of soups or salads, veggies, things like that. Okay, leftovers I love. That makes it easy. Um, um, you know, for those who don't have time or don't like to cook, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. You know, and shortcuts you can take, like buying pre-cut vegetables. Um, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, other stores have you know fresh pre-cut stuff or pre-prepared chicken that's you know chicken that's already cooked or you know games or you know different things that way um, that is ready to go. So again, just watch. Um, even at you know your better places like Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and Earth Fair, like a like if you look at their chicken sometimes, especially rotisserie chickens, I mean, they'll have a 50 ingredients list. You know, they'll have, oh man, yeah, all sorts of stuff going on in those. Um, so you just gotta watch, again, you know, something like that. If you're buying something, make sure they're not adding a bunch of junk, you know, and, and something. You guys are, you're educating yourselves by doing this. You're learning, and this is something you'll be able to take and use forever. And so in the beginning, yeah, and I'm sure you're finding out it's a little harder to, hey, I don't know what I can buy or what I can't buy. But then once you got that down, now you know, right, oh, I can have this, I can't have that, I did, you know, and then, great. You know, it's, it's not as hard to continue to grocery shop. You know, new stuff comes out, and then you look at the lady, you're like, yep, I'm not eating that. So, um, um, so, so you can go that way, all right? Um, you know, ordering out, you can still do that, right? You get a get get a meat, or you know, a, a veg, you know, a meat being chicken or turkey or something like that, and uh, veggies with it. I mean, pretty much every restaurant's got that. You know, you can you can get creative and do it that way. And I like to encourage this because, especially as us being in the South, a lot of times we don't like to step on anyone's toes. But this is one of those things. You're paying for the food if you're going out to eat. Get it how you want it. 
right? And ask the questions. Hey, does it have this? Is it cooked in this? How, you know, how is this prepared? What are you using? I remember I had one practice member, um, when I got a salad in there, like, oh, I'll take olive oil and vinegar with my salad because they're in detox phase, so perfectly fine to put on your salad. Or they asked for oil and vinegar, and then it came out, and she started to think about it, and she's like, what is this oil? And they use canola oil as their oil and vinegar. And canola, canola oil is not good, okay? Very um, processed, hydrogenized oil. Um, and uh, not, especially not something you want to eat raw um, on your food. So, so you want to ask, all right? You want to make sure it's olive oil you're getting. Um, but those are things, ask those. Get the food the way that you want to. Ask how those things are done. Um, don't feel like, hey, I'm that person or something. This is your, you know, this is, this is your health. This is your life. Your health is your greatest asset. Okay? And don't apologize for that because not only for yourself do you want to be healthy, but the people around you want you to be healthy. Right? And they want you to have the right thing. So no one's going to be mad about that. Uh, do it. You know, ask those questions. It's fine. Okay? Um, all right. So one other thing. Um, in uh, page 48, if you're used to snacking a lot, this is something, again, you, may, you might get when you start with the shakes, you might, you know, if you're not eating anything with it, um, you might, your, your stomach might rumble a little bit, or you might say, oh, I think I'm hungry. You know, one thing, make sure you're hydrated, all right? Make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, that can make the difference there. And then you do got to, sometimes you do have to fight through it just a little bit. You're not going to starve to death, I promise, all right? Um, but again, I don't want you to go into, hey, I need to starve myself mindset mode. That's not what I'm talking about either. I just want your body, if you're used to snacking a lot, your body will continue to ask for that because it's running on a sugar burn time. You know, even if you're not eating a lot of sugar, it's going to use those simple carbohydrates off the top as much as it can. So try to eat that meal, leave that time between the next one, all right? Eat that meal, leave that time between the next one, staying hydrated in between. Um, you know, if it's something where you're like, oh, I just gotta have something, you know, have some bone broth or, you know, get, get a little something that way. That's usually a good way to go. Especially if you're hunger, hungrier later in the day or in the evening, like before you go to bed, you're still hungry. You probably didn't get enough protein um, soon enough, um, you know, throughout your day. So getting that extra serving of bone broth or, you know, have another serving of OptiCleanse, you know, those are things that will help there. And OptiCleanse is a lifesaver when you travel. All right, that's something to do. Plan ahead to have Opti Cleanse before I go somewhere. If I know they're not going to have good options, you know, I'm good. I can make it through that and, you know, wait until my next meal and I'll be able to get something else if I didn't prepare and bring other snacks or food for me. So um, it's a great tool uh, in the future. All right. Um, if you are uh, not visiting the bathroom at least once a day during this period, this can change a little bit. Your digestion may decrease for a period of time and then increase for a period of time. It's okay. Again, we're doing some more heavy detoxification. We're giving your gut a rest and that gives it time to start flushing some things out. All right. But if consistently, you know, and we're moving through this and things aren't, you know, getting better or changing, you know, just let me know and we'll, we'll, we'll get you through that. All right. All right. Um, so this is one, I get this every once in a while, so I put it in here um, on page 49 at the top. Um, if you experience bloating during the first several days, um, something you can do is cook your vegetables. Because sometimes um, if you're eating more of just all raw vegetables, it's again a little bit harder for your body to break down. It's a lot of fiber and it can kind of work both ways against you. And you know, long term it's going to help you. But try to cook some of them instead of having them all raw. That's usually all that we need to do there. Sometimes with just some magnesium we need as well. So um, if cooking them isn't enough to help remove some of that bloating in the beginning, again, it may only be for a day or two and it'll probably just go away on its own anyway. Um, but again, we're here for you. If there's questions, you're not sure, hey, is this normal? Um, just let us know, all right? You've got my number, you know, you know where to get us. Um, and please feel free if you have questions. Um, texting or an email is best for me. If you call, I will call back. I'm not as fast at doing that, but I will eventually. Um, um, but uh, just ask, all right? Here to help. I have a question. Yes. Um, cooking your vegetables, do yeah. you lose any nutrients? So it depends. There's, um, I don't know if we put it in here or not. Um, 
If not, I'll get you. I'll get you all that. Some foods, when you um, steam them versus when you cook them versus you know when you stir fry them versus when they're raw, some of them actually bring out some nutrients that are easier to digest than they would be in a raw form. So actually, some are better to cook than others, and some are better to have raw than others. So I know that doesn't specifically answer your question, but. Um, I don't know, it might be in here. We'll, we'll see when we get to the end of um, that breakdown. If not, I'll, I'll find that list and I'll make sure you all get that. All right, so you can see what that look at. Um, so is steaming better than roasting? Um, usually, usually, yes. In general, steaming is the best way. Really, you know, in general, all right, it would be, hey, raw is the best, steam's the best, you know, the less you cook them, the best along the way. So that's traditionally the best way to go. Uh, but there is some exceptions in there, and that's what I'll, I'll find for you. All right? Um, so this says uh, finish your last meal no later than 6 p.m. Um, you know, so I know some people that might not be realistic, and that's okay. Like if you start later in the day with breakfast, then then you know it's okay to push it back a little bit. But if you're eating like eight o'clock and later, that's too late. Okay, so seven to seven thirty, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yep, you can do that. Um, but then you know, don't then once you're done with dinner. You know, don't eat after that. No more yeah. snacking or have you know, because the foods we eat at nighttime and later are they ever good choices? No, right? You know, it's just oh, I think I'm hungry, or no, I'm not even hungry. I just want to eat this food, right? And some of this, if you probably are already noticing through the eliminations that we're doing, but through detox, you'll start to notice that you know, hey, you don't have cravings for the same foods you used to have, and the way that you look at foods, or when you want to eat, those things are going to continue to change. And so, let, let it happen. Right? You know, let it be I'm like, wow, I don't crave this anymore. Yeah, because we're, we're changing what your body's doing, and, uh, and it'll thank you for it. All right? All right. I talked fast. We're going through that. I want to make sure we hit everything here. All right. Questions so far about the food list, um, our ramp up, our ramp down phase. Detoxification there, heavy detox. So main thing is, and we'll, we'll do, um, Dorothy, if you want to go to page um, 40 or 30. I have a question. Yeah. So how like 42. how important is it, especially during when you're having like the GI clinic shake two to three times a day, mm -hmm. to still do your bone broth? So, yeah, when you're having it three times a day, I mean, having, you know, bone broth once a day would be great. Um, if you don't have it, that's also not the end of the world there, all right, with that. Um, so, you know, when you're having it once or twice, it's still good to at least get one serving in there. Um, is it going to hurt you to have it? No. Is it going to hurt you to not have it? You know, probably not during that time. So, it's just kind of that middle phase there. So, like, in that, like, time, because it's the proteins, there's a lot of protein in the GI mm -hmm. clinic. So, what is the bone broth like for you? The bone broth has 20 grams of protein. Per so it's just even more protein? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But it's also, I mean, yes, it has protein in it, but it's also gut repair is what we're using that for, okay. which is why it's helpful during this. It has a lot of, it has the most natural collagen that you can get from anything that you're eating or that's out there is through bone broth, and that's a huge factor in, in repairing your gut. Okay. So that's the reason. So does that, is that not a... Is this is me, a stupid question. Yeah. Is that not a meal? Yes, it is. But, okay, so. but yeah, you're not eating it. So, you know, you're not chewing. The, the reason we're not having it is because we don't want to chew and break down okay. dense animal protein because that's hard on our digestive system. So, um, um, so, yeah, good question. Does it matter if you try to stick with like breakfast, lunch, and dinner around the same times? It's not, it's not the end, like that's not the end of, you know, hey, it's always got to be at the same times. More importantly is the time in between. Oh, okay. So that's what you oh, want. Like between dinner and breakfast. Yeah, yeah, well, between breakfast and lunch and lunch and dinner. Oh, yeah. so it should be even, I guess? Yeah, as much as you can. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. All right. It's All right. four or five hours between. So, I mean, let's see. It, Again, that's kind of you know, as long you want to at minimum be three hours, all right. Four hours is a is a better time frame there. Um, you know, four or longer. I'm um, doing with that. So, yeah, if you're doing it, you know, if you're having it more than three hours, your body's still not even using all the carbohydrates and stuff you ate from before from the veggies during that time, and you don't give your body that time because what you want is you want a little bit of starvation. You want your body to use those carbohydrates up for your normal daily activities. 
and then that time frame towards the end of when you last ate and when you're coming to the next one, that's when your body goes, okay, we've used up those carbohydrates or sugars, all right, even when you're eating vegetables or carbohydrates, and, um, and then your body goes, okay, now we're going to go to fats. And then so it starts to, to, to uh, break down some fats, all right, during that time. So, you know, it is, a it is technically considered kind of a starvation, folks. Your body's going to start using fat as energy, but that's normal. That's what your body's supposed to do. You don't want it long term, because then you do the opposite of that. Your body leaves, holds all the fat that you eat, and then it only uses sugar, and it just waits till the next one comes. Okay? Um, so, yeah, that quick breakdown again, page 42. So with OptiCleanse, you're going to do one serving, which is two scoops, for the first four days. Then you're going to do two scoops twice a day for the next four. Then you're going to do two scoops three times a day during the heavy detoxification with no animal protein eating during that day, which on the food list, you're going to eat everything on that food list other than that section of animal protein on there. Everything else is still good. Okay? And then you're going to go back down to twice a day, back down to once a day. All right, so, let's see, the, uh, uh, the next part, there's actually some great information here if you want to learn more about it. I've kind of given you the base rundown of, you know, you may have, when we've talked, you may have heard me say things like leaky gut or dysbiosis or different things that way. If you want to learn more about that or poor absorption issues, um, that's these next two pages here. Um, so you can look at that. Another reason why probiotics are so important. Um, some of the other things we're doing. Uh, it just says if you're taking acid reducing medications, you don't have digestive absorption dysfunction. Mm -hmm. I take medicine. Yeah. If I don't take it, then I can't do no. Yeah. It's, it's, no, that's you, you can continue mm -hmm. with that for now. Just go continue with that. And also, my stomach's what I was about to. Yeah. So yeah, continue with that now, and then once we're through this, we'll we'll start working working those things through. All right. Um, Page 53 is a GI tract, tract quiz. So that's something I really encourage you to go through. Look at this other stuff, all right? Break it down. And this is just a quick thing that you can go through and it'll be, okay, yes, I, you know, I read it and I, I understand it enough to answer these questions, then you did a, you did a good job there, right? It's kind of, that's for you to, to look at and it gives you <coughs> just some more kind of information uh, to, because uh, again, that's why, that's why this is so important. It's the why. Right? I could just come up here, I could hand you this food list and say do OptiCleanse once, twice, three times a day, and then down to one. But if you don't know why, or why this is important, or what causes what, or why this, you're going to do that, and then when you're done, then what? Right? Then what am I going to do? Or why did I do it in the first place? Right? Exactly. And so, so that's where this why, and why we do this, and why this, this process is so important. Right, is spending this time investing in yourself. You're investing in your health by learning this information. Okay, and then you can use that forever. You can use it for you. If you're married. You use it for your spouse. If you have kids, you use it to help your kids. All right, I love hearing those stories when you know families are doing this or they help their other family members and it's changed their life. Okay, I love that. If you, if you do that and you, you hear those things, share it with us. Um, all right. So the next, uh, the next couple pages are also going to be, again, kind of a breakdown for stuff. Um, where do your toxins come from? How are they processed in the body? What's your liver's role in that? What are your kidneys' role? GI tract, right? Um, so let's go quickly to page, um, if you're wondering, uh, page 57. What's wrong with gluten? All right, we might have talked a little bit about that already. If you're wondering more about that, because even if you aren't allergic and we don't know yet, we'll figure that out. Um, um, this is, it causes a lot of problems. All right, so, so if you want to read more about that. Um, the, next, uh, the next couple pages, it kind of depends on, on different things that you're going through. If there's something you say, hey, that sounds like me, you can look at those um, and do that. You know, talk about stabilizing blood sugar, acid and alkaline principle, um, proper food combining. When you're eating veggies, mainly with anything else, you're pretty much good in food combining. Okay? It's another process, you know, if you start eating fruit with certain things or certain meats or this or that, your body has a harder time breaking things down. So if you think about this, your body has different enzymes to break down different things in your stomach. 
Okay? So if you eat meat, those enzymes come in that are going to break down meat are going to come in with that. Well, great, if that's all that's going on, your body's pretty good, you're going to be able to break that down. But then you add these veggies, and then you add this drink, and then you add this, uh, this fruit. And now you've got these different enzymes all competing to try to break down food, and you're not getting all the nutrients out of those foods when you're eating certain things together like that. Okay, so um, that's something, again, we can spend hours just talking about that, but I just wanted to give you a general idea, you know, these things that we're eating here, you're going to be finding food combining in the future. It's just something to think about it when you're eating food that, um, you know, it can, it'll affect the nutrients you're getting from food based on what you're eating together. All right. Um, so let's go to um, 60. All right. So. You'll see in here there's a snack category. It's not because I want you to snack. It just shows you this is just kind of an idea of, you know, things that you could eat or whatever. You know, you, again, this isn't you only have to eat this much or that. You can eat more than that. It's fine. I'm not concerned about how much you're eating. Um, if we get to that point, we'll talk about it. However, now is this during the day? Really, okay. Yep. No, nope, this is all stuff that you'll be able to. Um, eat during DX. So it gives you some, some great different options that you can do and eat um, um, eat through there. So different different things and then uh, um, kind of gives you a little breakdown. Hey, if you want to plan meals out and, and do things, it just gives you an idea of what you could do. All right? Um, and we've got three whole pages of different things there. Um, Is that in here? Well, it just says with balsamic dressing. So, yeah, so... You can have, so yes, you can have balsamic vinegar. Mm -hmm. So you can have vinegar, but not vinaigrette. That's going to have sugar in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, it also has soybean oil, too. Everything has soybean oil. Yeah, yeah. Soy, you know, when you start looking at this, soy is in everything. Yeah. Almost all your packaged oh, foods, emotional all the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, and, and soy is a huge issue, especially for women, because it mimics estrogen. Right, within the body. It causes all sorts of problems, estrogen dominant cancers, um, many different things. So as much as you can stay away from soy, the better. Now, hey, if you're a vegetarian and you focus and you want certain soy, we can talk about unfermented versus fermented. There is good sources out there. It's very hard to find. Anything else that you get out, anything that's just in packaged foods or in oils or things like that is not going to be a good source. Okay. Um, all right, so that's going to be for that. And then the back part of that is your um, um, bunch of recipes, all right? So uh, detox approved recipes, all right, all going through there. Um, one of them's a dressing right on there. Uh, there's a dressing in there. Um, it might be in the back page. I don't have it up here in front of me. But um, different, different things that you can do and eat and uh, um, some great recipes we picked out and, and put together there for that. Whew. All right. Does that make sense? Quick question. Yes. So, <coughs> generally speaking, other than the night when I'm sleeping, mm -hmm. I'm chilly, cold, okay. whatever, chilled. Even right now, I'm chilled. Mm -hmm. So, I notice that I'm drinking less water because I'm cold. Mm -hmm. I've got the same thing. I, you know, I get to work in the morning. I get my glass of water. Normal habit for me is as long as I've got water, my glass yeah. sitting there, I'm good. I keep it full. I keep yeah. drinking it. But now that I'm cold, mm -hmm. I'm not drinking as much. And yeah. I've noticed that like the last week and a half or two weeks, I'm like, all right, I haven't gone to the bathroom in a long time. Yeah. No, I'm not drinking enough water. Yeah. But, you know, so it's like, I don't know if I'm colder anyway because of any of this, or, but... Um, it should, I mean, that, you know, in the wintertime when we're not outside and we're not sweating as much, yeah, it's pretty, it's normal for it to go down a little bit, but you don't want to make a big drastic change. Or something I find is if I eat, if I drink more room temperature water, it tends, you know, so that way it's not making me any colder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel the same way. And so I'll have, you know, room temperature water or, you know, I'll warm up my bone broth and kind of, instead of drinking it cold and, you know. That oh, way I, I usually do, do that. that so. That's one way that I yeah. <laughs> warm up. I'll have that instead of like. I used to have a cup of coffee like yeah. 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, now it's bone broth. Yeah. It's not what it's saying, but <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> I can so, pretend that it is. Yeah, so, so, so that's what you want to do there. I mean, you know, I mean, you got to just do the best you can with it. Try to maybe get some lemon and see if that helps. Yeah, I always you know, have lemon. Otherwise, so. I wouldn't drink it. But yeah, yeah I bring cut lemon every morning. 
and so I got lemon in it, but yeah, you just you know just chilly, so you just yeah. don't pick up that cold glass of water. Right. Yeah, I hear you. That's where I try to just go more room temperature, and uh, that way it doesn't make me any more cold. So right. yeah, and and something and kind of with that food combining thing as well, if um, you don't want to drink especially cold water about 20 minutes before you eat, okay. And really, you want to eat your food without drinking water during it. All right. If the you can you you can drink a, you know if you drink about four ounces or so of water with your meal, that's fine. But if you're drinking a lot of water with your meal, you're diluting those enzymes in your stomach. So your stomach's gonna have a hard time breaking down your food. You're gonna have larger food going through your digestive system, and it's um, you're not gonna get as much nutrients out of it. All right. So ideally, stop drinking large amounts of water 20 minutes before you eat. All right. Eat your food. Let it digest a little bit, and then you start drinking water again. All right, but if you are going to drink water, try to keep it to you know four to six ounces of water, and try to keep it, and try not to make it ice cold, because when it's cold, that will slow those enzymes down. All right, it's gonna you know it's like you put something in the ocean that's cold, right? The fish slow down, your enzymes slow down. All right, they don't they don't move as fast, so um, and uh, a little bit harder for your for your body to work with, because now you're now your small intestine, large intestine has to do all the work. That's just I have another general really question. Work. This was kind of from the other class from before that I just never remember to ask. Mm -hmm. So our, our cranberry drink, we're drinking three times a day, and it was set for, you know, morning, noon, and night essentially. Was the timing key to around around the meal, or was that just a good way to remember it? Yeah, no, it's just a good way to okay. remember it. Is that you don't have to have it, you know, right around the meal, you okay. know, before the meal, or, you know. Um, you don't you don't necessarily want to drink it after a meal, though. That's not ideal, because, again, we're talking food combining, and there is that cranberry in there, which is going to make a little bit of a change there with that, all right? Um, so, um, so, you know, doesn't really matter much as long as it's not right after your meal, all right? Okay. Lately, I think my lunchtime cranberry has been more after my lunch. And you can do it, I mean, just just try to wait 20 to 30 minutes or so after your lunch, oh, okay. you know? So, yeah, if you're not, let's just start doing that, okay? okay? All right, so here is your OptiCleanse, all right? There's two of them in there. You'll need a third one before we're done to, just through the detox here, okay? So you'll go through three containers during the 21 days. Um, so, they, the ones we normally use, it's a different flavor, it's a, a um, something vanilla, vanilla delight, they're out of it. So this is creamy chocolate, so I don't think, most people aren't going to, I don't think, complain about that. Um, but if you really don't like chocolate, um, uh, we'll, you know, if you can at least get one going, and they were on back order, so that's just why we had to get it. It should be out now, and just let me know if that doesn't work, if this doesn't work right. We'll, you know, we'll order, um, get it in as soon as we can. Um, but uh, it says, it'll say right, it says right on here, in your directions, two level scoops and 10 to 12 ounces of, of water. So there's your uh, OptiCleanse, all right? Which most people grow and learn to love. They really do. I was uh, at another practice member today. She said, love OptiCleanse, the best thing ever. Um, all right, so. We've got that. That's going to be for your uh, um, ramp up and ramp down period. And then also what you've got in there is you'll have NRF2 activator. Um, write this down um, somewhere. Because we normally give a little sheet about this, but... Uh, your med packs are coming, so we'll we'll just do it this way. All right, NRF2 activator. You're going to do two at lunchtime. Two at lunchtime? Yep. That's it. Well, I mean, uh, uh, for this, okay. uh, we're going to get you new med packs. They also called and told me they're sorry that they're not here yet. They were supposed to be. So you're getting updated med packs. They shipped today, so they should be here tomorrow or the next day. Um, and so we'll just want to make sure that you get those, um, preferably by, you know, start do the med packs themselves by next Monday or Tuesday. So are okay. those the same as active probiotic and vitamin D? So there's going to be a lot more in it this okay. time, but though that's also going to be in there. 
all right? But it's going to be the same thing as where it's going to be an AM, PM thing, and uh, um, and uh, you'll just take them. There's just more, there's going to be a lot more supplementation that's going to go on with that. And then, so I think I don't. I'm assuming you're probably the same, but I am. I still have several days. Left that's okay. That. So yeah. Just keep yep. That yep. Just done. just keep taking that until you get your other one, and then you start that one. If you still have some left over, hold on to that, and then we'll use that after your detox is over. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, two of these at once time, all right, and that's why these are separate because we didn't put this in your detox pack because if you can separate this out from lunch instead of AM, PM, great. If you're like, Doc, I just, I can't remember to take it at lunch or whatever, just take it whenever, but just take it, okay? This is a big inflammatory factor. This is an incredible supplement. Just make sure you get it in. If you can keep it away from the other things, great. If you can't, that's okay too. So, right. can you take that with that, the optical? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you can put that together. Yeah, just not... Uh, um, I just try to separate it from all the other supplements, okay? Um, and then the other thing is drainage, okay? This you're going to do six drops, okay? Not dropper full. Right, we had this issue once. We had people were doing droppers full of this and of D3. I'm like, oh. All right, six drops, okay, of this at bedtime and then in the morning. So six before bed and six when you wake up. They just like yeah, you put it right on your tongue. Like this. Six drops by mouth at bedtime. It says on here, but you're gonna do bedtime and in the morning. Six and six. Okay? And what does this do? So this is gonna be a liver um, help with liver detoxification. Alright? This is the only homeopathic thing um, that we're gonna give you. There's kind of good and bad with homeopathic. We don't have to go into all homeopathic just means, hey, it's seem to believe that this is how this should work. It's just a natural thing, you know, that's out there. As where everything else Zymogen does and things I like to go, it's objective-based, science-based thing, saying, oh no, this is how it actually works in the body. And it's been tested and shown that. Uh, homeopathic things, you can't really show that, however, um, specifically towards this, however, they've seen the results for it, and that's why they carry it, because it seems to work, so, and does it need to be coordinated around like before breakfast yeah. or no, this is it fine. tonight? And yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, you'll have, you'll have, uh, you won't use all this during the 21 day. So um, you can hold on to it for then what I recommend is about every six months or so is to do some sort of detoxification. You don't have to do a, you know, 21 day. I normally recommend people do about a 14 day though, you know, for a follow up and you don't have the transition time because you've already done that. You just do the detox and then you can use this again. Um, and there's just a couple things that I recommend to do if you do a follow-up detox, not the, the extent that we're doing this time. And we can talk about that when we get there. All right, so this is something just hold on to. Um, I like to put it, I have it next to a, like my toothbrush thing, so you know, that way I do it at night and in the morning, so I see it there. So this is a lot of stuff going into our bodies that our bodies aren't used to. Mm -hmm. What kinds of side effects are we gonna end up with like? Major bathroom issues for a couple days. No, you really shouldn't. It shouldn't be like you're on the bathroom all the time. It shouldn't be, I mean, you shouldn't, you know, any like people, if they say, oh, I get, head, you know, if you're going to have a headache, you probably already would have had it. That would have been with caffeine or sugar. All right, that's usually the only time you get something like that. Um, like I said, digestion, it may happen where you may, it may slow down and then it may increase where you're going multiple times a day, but it should, you know, it shouldn't be diarrhea and it shouldn't be like you're going, you know, every hour you're going to the bathroom. It shouldn't be anything like that. So um, I'm trying to think of any like negative else that anyone's ever had or done. It's, you really should, I mean, this is all natural, great stuff. We've done this over and we have this perfected <coughs> down and people tend to do really well, you know. Is that the difference issues, between so. doing a cleanse with um, like one of the juice Places, There's a couple people at my office have done that, yeah. and you know, I see them like run to the bathroom. Like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, this is a thought out process. It's a system. That's what it is. It's a structure that works, and it's something together. And that's why those transitions. You know, you say, how can I just get rid of all of those and then just start in? Well, no, because there's a. I mean, you could drop them all at once, but we still need that time period. You know, there's a transition of what we're getting your body ready to. Now, if you wouldn't have done anything up until this point, and then I hand you all this, and then you do it, and you do it for 21 days, yeah, you'd probably have symptoms. You'd probably have negative symptoms. Um, um, you might have, you know, stomach pains and headaches and, you know, all sorts of stuff, but most people don't have that with 
process because we've already most of that stuff that would cause that we've flushed out slowly already and then we're, we're kind of working through the rest here how did all this get developed so part partially where some of it started um, was a um, a provider out of Texas um, is where some of this is where we learn in terms of um, some of this structural process that goes in and how it works through his name's Charlie Webb um, and uh, um, he perfected it over about 20 years, and then um, and then we, you know, brought brought in what we thought was great, and you know, took out things that didn't work for what we were doing, and and created um, what you're seeing today. So, um, but that was boy, we we've, we've used all sorts of different resources and things, and you know, from Zymogen and you know other resources and people that we've done and worked with, and then also trial and error, you know, we're doing this. So, um, you guys are getting uh, the best of the best here when it comes to that. All right. Um, all right, so our action steps are tomorrow we're going to start with our once a day with OptiCleanse, all right, um, and you're on your food list for the 21 days. Hang it with your cranberry drink, get your bone broth in when you can, all right, and, uh, um, then and that's gonna... all the way through. I mean, cranberry and bone broth all the way through, even yep. the heavy. Yep. Yeah. How yep. about that? Awful, awful, gluten, aloe stuff, whatever. Once you're done with it, you're done. So, are you doing it twice a day? No way. Okay. <laughs> I'm lucky to do it once a day. Okay. Most of the time, I just like, look, yeah. I reflex anyway. Is that what you're taking? What's that? Tastes like rotten plastic. Yeah, is that? Oh, yeah, oh my that's gosh. The one. I have to yeah. sit out of the seat because I don't know if it's going to stay or not. That must be just something like that. You put in the cranberry juice? Because it really helps. Oh, yeah. nobody told me to do that. Yeah. Like, you, like, I put in the, like, yeah, just put it with your plate. Is that the stuff at night? Are you talking about? It's the stuff in that little tiny, like, canister. <clears throat> and that you really scoop it. You're supposed to put, like, one ounce of water or two ounces of water two with ounces. it and, like, take a shot. I think. But do it with the brownish. Yeah, I always put I never put it in there. Oh, so I guess I must have missed that. It's, it's not. I'm doing that stuff. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's still not great, yeah. but it's not bad. Yeah, right. yeah it's tolerable. Yeah. It's not as bad as it could. I mean, yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, so if you get I don't that, know yeah. I don't that stuff is, but I'm pissed yeah. on the train. I feel bad. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, ugh, I can't. Yeah, so <laughs> put, yeah, <laughs> put, yeah, put it in your cranberry. Um, do it that way. And yeah, if you can do it twice a day for whatever you have left is, you know, ideal there. Okay. So, um, yeah, because I still have some left too. Yeah, so once you're, once you're done, yeah, uh, once you're done, you're done with that. We won't need to continue with that. So. Is that a good one, like, after the detox, though, to have? You can, you can, you know, do it again later. I like to, I would do it after we do all the uh, um, re-edition. So, um, we'll talk about that at your next class, but let me give you a brief rundown on that. All right, once we're done with the 21 days, we're not going to go crazy, all right? Um, this is an important time. Some people get into the get into introducing foods too quickly, and then they don't realize things that are affecting them, and then down the road we're like, all right, there's something still there that we miss, and we got to do some detoxification again and start over. You know, I mean, or we could spend a thousand dollars and pay for food sensitivity and, you know, do things and get, you know, down that way. But this is something that, hey, it's already built in. We should be able to figure out most of it without doing those things, all right? Um, so once you're done with the 21 days, we're going to slowly start adding food <coughs> back in, all right? Um, again, Alex is going to give you this at the next class. I'm going to talk about that. Um, but you're going to introduce one food, all right? So day 22, you're going to introduce one food. If you don't have any negative reactions, eat it again later that day. No negative reactions, eat it one more time the next day, and then don't eat anything for the third day, and if no negative reactions, and that can be, you may notice yourself clearing your throat, you may, you know, um, have bloating or gas or stomach ache, um, some people will break out, I've seen, you know, around your eyes and things like that, different, different symptoms, and we've got a whole list of stuff that, um, you know, you might notice that might not be your typical, hey, I have, you know, this food bothers me type of thing that we'll be able to flush out and do there. But that's going to be something we're going to be doing day, um, you know, every three days, essentially, we'll add a food in, right? So if there's something you've been missing and wanting to add back in, it's on, you know, the list there, do that one first, and the next one set. You don't have to do them in a certain order. Um, um, but you need to spread those out and make sure we don't have any problems. Because some people say, oh, I ate it, didn't have any problems, and then they'll the next day go to something else, and, uh, and then they've added something else, and then two days later, now they've got some symptoms coming in, but it was really from the first food that they had, but it didn't come for two days later, all 
right? So um, you don't know if you've added other stuff in because now you've just you know gone too far. So um, all right, so that we're doing, you'll start adding those back in. We'll have a better look at you know what uh, our diet looks like, things that we're doing, things that we're eating, and then uh, start focusing the other areas that we need to focus on in terms of your health, your health goals, those things that we're working on with you. Do you all right. Larry, when you say one food, one food hmm. or one food group? So one like, food. Okay, so, so for like, grains, it's going to be like... Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's something you would want to do one because something, um, I'm, I'm allergic to quinoa. I had no idea. So, uh, but I'm not allergic to rice. Um, I'm allergic to gluten. Uh, so, so those are things that, yeah, you want to do individually. I'm just not going to eat that way. But like, yeah, you would try eggs, you know, and you do that, and then you would go to beef and do that, and then, you know, quinoa, you know, or whatever it is that you wanted to put in there. Okay. If during this um, detox part, we do find, uh, I don't know, that we're having a symptom, yeah. you know, your stomach is cramped or whatever, yeah. I mean, obviously then just let you know, because yes. we either didn't do a great job of stopping everything. I'm just thinking, like, because I eat so limited stuff. Yeah. So in the morning, I've been eating just Cheerios because they're supposed to be gluten-free mm -hmm. and the most healthiest thing with the almond milk. Mm -hmm. But I've been eating that, so that's you know, a little bowl of that as breakfast. Otherwise, I wasn't going to have anything for breakfast. Yeah. So if for whatever reason now we're into the detox part and, um, I don't know, something that might be in the Cheerios, for yeah. example. Well, you won't be having Cheerios during no, the detox. Right, yeah. right, I know, but I'm just thinking... So then if we are in the detox part and you notice that there, that you are feeling something. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Let us know if there is something within the detox. The food that's left in the detox list is really not very much for allergic style foods. Um, I, did have, I did have one person have issues with uh, almonds um, that I've had. But outside of that, there shouldn't be much in the foods that you're going to be eating during detox that's going to cause you any sort of issues. If there is, let us know and we'll work through that. But um, the stuff that normally causes problems, we've removed because they cause problems. So that's what I'm thinking. If, if for whatever reason, obviously I didn't remove Cheerios yeah. because I had to eat something. But if there was just something in there, yeah. maybe that's not a good example. Yeah. But So then now we all of a sudden notice that you know I've got something going on during yeah. the detox and obviously... Maybe we decide it was the Cheerios because yeah. I didn't remove them, mm -hmm. but yeah, at that point, I guess we just tell you. And yeah, just let me, yeah, just talk with me. We'll figure it out. We'll we'll get down to that and because uh, um, yeah, some things could cause issues and some might not be. So we'll be able to work through that. Yeah, for sure. So what would a reaction to almonds look like? The um, same, like. So this person person's? specifically had. Um, they continued to have these this red rash right here in the side their inside of her nose. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of, it, it wasn't really itchy, but it bothered her. And it also just didn't look great. You know, it looked almost like scaly skin right in here. And thought it was, oh, you know, I'm breaking out. Or thought, you know, hey, maybe it was makeup. And then thought maybe it was, you know, that she was using one of those uh, cleaning cloths, like, to remove her makeup. Thought it was that. Um, and then, you know, but we, were, we figured out what it was. And it was almond. So, um, um, hers was, you know, she just had some stuff that bothered her, right, you know, around her nose. And when I removed it, completely went away, it's never come back, so. Um. So, because we're at the end of the six weeks now, and I'm, last week started having, like, drainage stuff again. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm drainage like, I'm going to go through the 21 too. day and still feel this way, and I feel like I've eliminated everything. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know, maybe it's <laughs> almonds, maybe it's, like, Alex was allergic to mushrooms, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm eating right. mushrooms almost every day. Yeah, right. So it's, I don't know how much you yeah, so, be eliminating if it's even food or if it's literally mold outside or something. Yeah, right. And so that's something, again, once we kind of, a lot of times when we, because even if you are eating some of those things, when we detox it out of our cells, there's probably stuff that you were eating from before that's still affecting you. Oh, okay. All right. That so some of those things that you say, <laughs> oh, yeah, this affected me or I had this, will just go away and they just won't be there anymore. Okay. So, um, but you know, sure, there could be other things that you're eating that could be a problem, and if that's the case, we'll get down to it. It's rare, but um, um, you know, we'll I've figure. Definitely we'll, yeah. ate my share of almonds the last yeah. six weeks, and yeah. I've never eaten that many almonds in my and, life. So. And and so also, um, <coughs> if people aren't getting an organic raw nut. Um, a lot of times they have extra stuff or processed and other things that um, causes issues. So it wasn't the almond themselves, it was what was on them or how they yeah. were processed with other things. So 
Um, so that's another thing to uh, you know make sure you're yeah, you're doing that as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. But yeah, don't worry so much about that. Just you know, stay within the, the food could list. Actually, yeah. just literally be going away after the detox. Yes, correct. Which I'm hoping. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. want to break my head again. Yes, exactly. So work through that. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Good. Makes sense. All right. Any last questions? You know your action steps. So the only other thing is we will text all of you um, as soon as um, text or call you as soon as those med packs are here. All right, so that you know they're here, so you can pick those up and you'll be able to start those. Um, you know, again, like I know it's you know, I'd love to have had them right now, so you'd have them even though you wouldn't be starting them right away. But um, we'll, we'll get them to you, and uh, we want to try to start those by Tuesday at the latest. All right, um, if you can get them and start them, um, you know. By the end of this week, that would be great. You can start them, you know, you can start it as soon as you get it at this point, you know, by Wednesday or Thursday. Okay? Okay. All right. Perfect. Well, you all get out there, do it, have a great day, and we will uh, I'll see you soon. <clears throat>